Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from executeautomation.com and welcome to another video for API testing with REST Assured and Cucumber cores. And in this video we will be talking about understanding and working with non-BDD styled REST Assured syntax and once again this is a complete continuation of our previous video because in our previous video we were creating the libraries something like this and we could able to create the libraries but we did not really use them so we are going to be using these library that we have built in our previous video and we'll understand how things work so as we saw in our previous video we could able to create a constructor for our rest assured extension class that we created something like this on the right hand side and we also created two methods something like this like get ops with path parameter and get ops without path parameter, something like that, right? So as you can see, this is the arrange and this is the act. And I have modified the syntax a little bit by adding some comments and by adding the try catch block. And you can see that this is what exactly it is. So we have the arrange and we have the act, but we don't really have the assert. So basically the response that we're gonna get back from these rest assured APIs is what we're gonna be asserting for. So in order to use the assertion, we are going to do something like this. So basically, we will be calling the rest assured extension class using this particular line. As you can see, I'm going to call the rest assured extension of rest assured extension is, going to, is equal to new rest assured extension. So by calling this, this is going to be calling the constructor of the rest assured extension class. And then we are going to be calling the method within the rest assured extension, which is nothing but the get ops method that we created. So we're gonna be passing the URL, which is nothing but the relative URL, like slash posts. And then we need to assert the response coming in from the response body. So basically the response that we're gonna have in here is gonna be used to get the body. And from the get body method, we can use the JSON path. And with that, we're gonna call the get method to get the author and then we can verify whether it has the item of Karthi KK in it. So if it has, then the assertion is passed. Very, very simple and straightforward. And we'll be doing exactly the same thing in this particular video. So let's quickly see everything in action and understand how things work. So for that, I'm going to flip to IntelliJ IDE. All right, so this is our IntelliJ IDE. And this is the same project that we were discussing in our previous video, just that I have added a couple of try catch blocks here so that the code looks a little different, at least more meaningful. And you can see even the method names are not very, very meaningful as of now, but just bear with me. We are gonna be completely modifying these methods in our upcoming videos in order to simplify the life of the testers as of now while we are understanding things. I'm just gonna be keeping them as it is. We'll try to use them before we'll try to modify these methods and refactor all of them, right? So what I'm gonna do is this. This time, we are gonna make use of our scenarios that we couldn't able to use in our previous videos, right? So it says, given I perform the get operation for the slash post, so this guy now comes into life. So because it has the URL, I'm gonna be calling this particular uh, method over here. So because rest assured extension should be called every time before our test actually starts, we can actually call this one in what is called as the hooks. So we can put the hooks so that we can make use of that. So maybe I can put the hooks within in here. So I'm just gonna call this as test initialize. And within this test initialize, I'm gonna be calling the at before. And this guy is gonna be responsible for invoking our method so it's going to be test initialize or test setup and within here i can just call the rest assured extension so i'm going to do that and rest assured extension here there you go and now we have this particular rest assured extension and now we can easily call the rest assured extensions anywhere so that I can probably use that guy even easily. So I can just call the rest assured extension dot response to perform the operation if I want to, because these methods are actually, uh, I can also make them as static so that it's very, very easy as well. So it's gonna, and similarly, this can be public static as well. You can see now the code is kind of changing very, very rapidly. 
and now if I go to our uh, feature file and if I go to the step definition here I can just call the rest assured extension dot and you can see we can now call the get ops and then I can pass the URL here something like this very very simple I perform the get for the post number so in order to do that I'm actually gonna be passing the parameter or which is something but the path parameter so again if I'm gonna use these two in conjunction it is not really gonna be making any sense so as of now I'm just gonna remove that particular step definition from here very quickly and here for the assertion I'm gonna be adding the assertion code that we saw before so I'm just gonna add the var response is equal to now I'm just gonna call and because this is going to give as a response, I'm actually going to be adding the response in a private static response option. And this response is going to be sitting over here. So I can now call the response to do all the operation for me. So this is going to be the author name that we are passing in, which is nothing but Karthi KK. And we can verify that using the assert that method which I can add the reference here and within this assert that I'm going to be calling the response dot get body method and within this get body we have another method something like JSON path and so actually within this get body we can also do something called a speak or pretty peak or pretty print and print these methods are very, very handy when you want to debug the code but mostly if you want to get the JSON elements you can use the JSON path and then you can call the get method and you can see it has the path that you can pass in and we know the path is something but the author that we are looking for we can pass that over here and then we can assert using what is called as has item I'm in this has item I'm going to be passing the Karthi KK again these things are pretty much exactly the same thing that we did before in our BDD styled fashion as well so you can see it's exactly the same code that we saw before even the has item we did exactly the same thing in our previous video while we were working with the query parameters so I'm doing exactly the same thing even this time right so I have did that and now that we have used the BDD styled fashion a little bit compared to before at least and now if I try to run this particular piece of code it should work I guess it might fail because it should be slash posts instead of post so let's see what's gonna happen so we get a null here so you can also see within our JSON server we are getting a 404 because it should be posts instead of post so which means our URL is actually being passed correctly to the library and it is also fetching so let's see what's going to happen now you should pass posts there we go it costs 200 and the test has also got passed so which means our library that we have written is actually working fine so the test while it executes it goes to test initialize it initializes the arrange perfectly because it has this particular constructor to set all the values for us in here and then while we call the step definition of get ops method it actually performed the get operation because this is what it has been written in here and once the operation has been done it returns a response to us and this response actually has the body of JSON path and it has the author within it and then we can verify that we can also do this we can also put a breakpoint here and I can try to debug this particular piece of code and I will show you how the code actually looks like so you can see the debug point has hit here so now I can directly uh, do this what is called as evaluate expression and I can see what's there in the body and again as I said there is something called as print or peak print method so I can just do the print and you can see it shows me all the values here very very nicely and this print method is very very handy as I said for debugging and now I can call this particular JSON path and then you can also get what is called as title or something like that so I can just get the uh, let's say ID 
and you can see that I get the ID of three and I can make it to two string and I can see like one, two and three. So I could able to verify that without any problem. And because we're directly passing the posts directly, I could able to see all the three posts coming in. But if you want to use the path parameter, so you should be calling a different method so that it don't return you all the posts instead of it should return only one post. So we can also do that. So probably we'll be doing that in our next video and then we'll try to wrap up this particular library even much easily so that the code can make even more sense than before. So once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.